Hey children over 30, it's Drew back with, um, I guess it's kind of a product review. I'm going to be talking about these like old school UFS Solomon frames. And then the crazy ass Joe Atkinson mod that lets you fit like 72 millimeter wheels in them. So I guess I can start with like the frame review part of this. Not every pair of these that I have, the H-Block came out, which is part of the mod thing. It's necessary to do the mod. So I've never done an H-block trick or a groove trick on a Solomon frame in my life, just period. I have no idea about any of that. And really from that standpoint, it's it's kind of hard to assess how well a frame slides. On Soul Tricks, you know, your frame is obviously still touching, but you can't wholly attribute how fast you slide on Soul Tricks to your frame. You know, so I mean, there's just, it's, it's a variable at best. In my experience though, um, with that qualifier kind of in mind, they slide pretty good. I've been rocking them. I showed you on my uh, on my K2 Midtowns, and I've been really, really working on like form and technique of just like basic soul tricks and stuff. Because again, I mentioned in one of my other videos, but I just started skating again after 12 years off, probably in like the middle of September and something like that. So for that, I've been kind of I have the system where it's it's similar to the game that people play, but I'll just do like five soul grinds on an obstacle um, and try to come out fakie and get good speed on them. And then I'll do five Mizzou's and five uh, like safety max, and then I'll do them all switch. So it's really just like bam, 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 one after the other. And I haven't had any problems sticking with these on anything. So I've been changing up the obstacle that I've been doing it on, you know, relatively regularly. Again, like park benches, uh, little rails at parks, um, concrete ledges and stuff like that. I haven't noticed these stick any more than like any of the more modern frames that I've had. So I would say that, you know, slide wise, these frames probably would easily stand up with anything out there by, you know, Kaiser ground control or anything like that. I mean, Symmetrics frames are probably faster, but these also, I got them on blade trade for like $20. So there's, there's a bit of a difference there. Also, if you're somebody that's into grind plates, this little middle piece right here actually comes out and it's like a little grind plate-like apparatus. So it would be an excellent candidate for that. They have these left and right rockers on, on the side. And again, going back to the mod, they're necessary. The reason that you can fit 72s in this or bigger wheels at all is because of the removable H block and the rocker ability. So again, I'll touch on that later, but it's kind of nice from like a swivelly, dancey kind of point of view too. Because these frames that I'm holding right now are 270 millimeter, which is considerably longer than your standard like 80 millimeter frame. Not quite as long as like, uh, you know, the Wizards that I reviewed a little bit ago or anything like that. It's kind of like right nice between that. For the wheels, I've been using like a banana rocker. So I have 72s in the middle and then 68s on the outside. So a two millimeter rocker. Um, on a standard like 243 millimeter or even like a 250 frame, a two millimeter rocker can feel pretty drastic. Uh, on these, I didn't really have that issue because of the extra length. I mean, you figure it's a 270 millimeter frame, so 90, 90, 90, you have three 90 millimeter wheelbases. They're pretty stable. I was even having this problem when I first got them that I would accidentally kind of roll back into the heel position because the placement of the third wheel's uh, not really ideal. And plus, you know, the wheels were fresh and everything, but because it was such a stable lock in tool position, I'd be rolling and like caught on that back position and I'd have to like kind of muscle my way back forward, uh, which is funny. But yeah, just go show you when you would normally go back on your heels and slip out. Instead, you get this, you know, less than ideal, but still somewhat maintainable position. So that was cool. Also, with the outside ones being left and right rockerable. Oh, and by the way, these come in like a 250 and I think either a 230 and a 220 or I don't know. But you can kind of adjust that overall frame length a little bit with the rockers on the outside. So on those, I ended up rocking them in. And the rockers are, I think, somewhere between 8 millimeters and a centimeter. So it's actually a pretty drastic change. But I ended up um, taking them in in the front and then leaving them out in the back reason being you can handle a little bit less stable Or I can handle a little bit of a less stable position in the front in the back That's the thing that's keeping you from slipping out and falling on your ass. So You know, it's it's nice to have a little bit of extra extra room back there and just to give you an idea of how sensitive that is um, When I was sort of testing these out one day I took the rockers and in, in the back and I just flipped them in you know see how that goes 
and you know just skating like i was i was pretty okay it wasn't too bad but i noticed like i'd hit a grind and come out and then like my feet would just start like flying all over the place i mean as far as coming off an obstacle and landing uh yeah again it was just it was slippery as hell and i felt like i was gonna bust my ass constantly so i pretty quickly switched them back realistically it would be better for me to just get used to it but you know two baby steps whatever as far as other things to review on these frames um I mean, I guess if you're gonna use them for groove tricks, which again, I, I mean, I don't imagine the H block being a different enough material or slow enough to just totally ruin the slide ability. I imagine like the groove tricks slide pretty good on this too, and groove tricks in general slide pretty good. But it is kind of nice that they have just this little groove in there. It's not like the slim lines that I keep putting off reviewing because I'm just totally not into them, um, where it's just a big gap fucking like you're gonna be going out and like grinding sewer pipes 90 percent of the time it's just a nice little i mean you could lock onto a rail with that or a ledge real nice you know being in this position where i just came back really not that long ago i think i'm in a nice spot to where it's like if i can make something work then you know 90 percent of the rollerbladers out there should have like no fucking problems making it work and i can make these work okay let's get on to the mod so this is one of the frames from the midtowns you can see the middle wheels being 72 stick up a little bit more than the outsides being 68s. And these are worn down a little bit. They're not 100% fresh. From the center of this bolt to the top of the frame is about 31 millimeters. So uh, if you want no rub whatsoever, or you don't want to cut into your soles or your boots at all, like 60, 62 millimeter wheels are about as much as you're going to be able to do. But getting into the bigger wheel thing, you know, the Joe Atkinson mod, uh, here's what you gotta do. So, the top of the frames, you can see there's little grooves. Those aren't stock grooves uh, between the middle wheels on the end where it's kind of ground out and round. Um, I did that with a Dremel and some sandpaper, you know, combination of the two. And I had to do it right here on this side of the frame too. Other than that, you just gotta kind of take out the H block, which is normally a screw right there. So you take it out, H block pops out, and then with these left right rockers rockered to the inside um, you can see once again it totally avoids the ufs bolts so you don't have any interference whatsoever and it's kind of nice being a frame that used to have an h block in it you can see the space between the middle wheels is i mean it's not big and ideally for what i'm about to say it wouldn't have a groove whatsoever but like on sole grinds and stuff like that, getting that front foot position to where it slides and doesn't just wheel bite is a little bit easier on this than it is on, say, my arrows, which are 243 millimeter, which barely fits fucking 80 millimeter wheels. It's like the smallest frame that you can make with 80 millimeter wheels. Whereas this, um, the 270 is more akin to like, uh, like a 90 millimeter frame. So you can imagine 72 millimeter wheels on a 90 millimeter frame would look pretty similar to that. Again though, with bigger wheels, you're gonna to have to come into a boot, which becomes sort of the limiting factor with this. So 72 millimeter wheels, the radius on that would be 36 millimeters, which means that you're gonna have you know, about half a centimeter of wheel sticking out of the top, maybe even a little bit more. And then with the 68 millimeter wheels, you're gonna have about three millimeters sticking out of the top, which you know, really isn't too bad. The reason that this is a limiting factor is because this means that you have to go into the sole plates and maybe even the boots, depending on the size of the wheels that you're gonna do. Um, something like 64, 65 millimeter wheels, I would feel comfortable mounting on something like a USD carbon to where you know, you have this really thin sole plate and then a boot underneath it that you do not want to cut into at all. But for the full like Joe Atkinson experience of you know 72s on this frame, you're gonna need something that you can cut past a sole plate and then into a boot that's got some thickness to it. Let me show you kind of what that looks like on the Midtowns. So I got these uh, Varsity sole plates a little bit ago and you can see they're all weld out. You can also see I don't do any negatives. I'm just a positive person, what can I say? And then the boots, um, the boots weren't really too bad. These plates themselves, um, I mean, you know, the spot where the, where the frame goes through isn't very thick at all. I would place it like maybe, maybe like a millimeter or two max. I mean, it's not very thick plastic at all, which means for these, I definitely had to go into the boot. So luckily on the bottom of these, there's this channel. Uh, yeah, there it is right there. So that's where the wheel ended up going. I didn't have to, you know, cut out any of that. Um, this back spot, I didn't have to cut out any of that. The toe, I had to grind down just a little bit to get the front wheel to fit. And then this spot right here where the second wheel goes, 
Um, I probably had to come down about a, a millimeter or two right there. Not really like a whole lot. The soles on this, this plastic is actually pretty thick. Um, I didn't even go halfway through it into the boot. Had I not had the varsity sole plates on top of that, it would have been maybe a little bit more questionable. I'm 100% positive that I could have still made them fit. But yeah, it would have been kind of getting down in there. Other skates that I would feel comfortable doing this on, um, Solomon's. Obviously, Joe does it on Solomon's and it works great for that. Uh, the Solomon boot is pretty thick, and then I think he uses the stock soles on those, and, you know, that's even more of a buffer. Uh, like a Rollerblade TRS, maybe? Or like a New Jack, something like that? I, th I think you could probably do it. I'm 100% sure that you could do 68s. Not 100% sure that you could do 72s on that. Now, other than that, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't have a lot of experience with Volos, so I can't speak to those. Um... I've only had one pair of rims and they were like the second, like the tan and black ones. I mean, they probably, they wouldn't have worked for that, but nobody has those anymore anyway. Any of the Seba skates, yeah, there's, there's no way it would happen. Uh, you could, you could maybe do 68s if you cut through the plates, maybe, maybe, but it's, it, again, you're getting into dangerous territory because then that's a really nice carbon fiber boot and you don't want to cut into that shit. Knowing all that, why the hell would you want to do that with these frames when you could just go out and get yourself like some Megas or some Juicy Bigs or something like that, which are actually made to handle the wheels. You're not going to have to go into your soles at all, um, let alone your boots. And there's really like a couple of reasons for that. Uh, first reason would be just the ride height. I mean, all of that wheel sticking out is just distance from the ground that you're not going to have to deal with. I can land like a top horn on coping in these. Um, and like skateboarder coping at that, which doesn't even come like above the ramp whatsoever, uh, which is pretty cool for me because again, you know, I've only been back on skates for like six months. Um, a lot of that was winter when I kind of, you know, veered into figure skating a little bit more and used that as a means to skate when I couldn't skate, so to speak. But again, top sides on these are like immeasurably easier than they are on like my arrow setup or anything like that. It actually feels comfortable to do them. It doesn't feel like I'm about to break my knee or something because I don't have the correct muscles built up for those like sit down kind of things yet. Another thing that's nice is again, the length. With these longer frames, they're gonna be a bit more stable. Um, of course, I use that to its benefit for rockering and stuff like that. But if you're a flat rocker guy, like you don't like to swivel around, doing gaps and stuff like that is gonna be considerably more comfortable on a longer frame. You're just not gonna fall on your ass or forward for that matter as much as you would on a shorter frame. GC Bigs, I think, are around like 260 millimeters or something like that. I think the size large of Megas are actually the same size as this. But again, they, they take a little bit of a smaller wheel. As far as using these for free skate purposes and stuff, um, they actually went all out for the bearings for these wheels, uh, which by the way are like some, some undercovers, uh, 88As. And I got the Bones Swiss 6, which are supposed to be like really, really good bearings, and I put them in here and I was expecting, well, I was hoping that they would be at least sort of maybe as fast as my like 76 setup that has the K2 twin cam ILQ9s and like 84 8 wheels. And it's not like at all, and I don't think it's a wheel size thing. I think it's an aluminum versus plastic frame thing. Aluminum frames are just way, way faster. Uh, it's it's a big noticeable thing. I mean, we're not talking about like, oh, you get 30% you know, more power transfer with a fucking Kaiser Trinity mount. This is like a tangible thing. Like it's, it's real shit. Plastic frames are a lot slower to roll around in than aluminum frames, in my experience. So it's not going to be like a night and day, like one person on 60s versus somebody else on this, you know, the person on this being way faster. It's not that huge of a difference, but it is still pretty nice. Um, Skating around parks and stuff, I usually don't have to stride too much. Of course, on the aluminum frame, I don't have to stride at all. I can hit most bike paths in town and not have to stride at all, except maybe on a couple hills, which is super dope. I love it. So yeah, it's it's kind of a medium ground there. You know, it's not going to be the fastest rolling frame ever, but it is going to be faster than like your standard aggressive frame. It's not going to be the absolute best big wheel grinding uh thing that you would want but with the extra length kind of taming out the rocker it's my preference for doing swivelly type tricks right now it's just it's great for doing that type of shit and it's still better to grind with than like my kaiser arrows are uh because of that extra little space in the middle so that's about it um all in all a pretty niche product and mod you know it's 
probably not worth checking out for a lot of people. It's sort of a very delicate compromise, like something like this versus like bigs or megas or something like that. Based on where your priorities lie, you know, one is going to definitely suit your needs better than the other. For me, I would absolutely take these 100% of the time over either of those. But realistically, I'm the minority in that. So bottom line, um, if you want like a bigger wheel kind of frame and uh, you want to keep all your, all your groove tricks and stuff, and you can do top sides pretty easy, like you're at that level in your skating where, you know, doing like a fish brain on the ledge or something like that for a good distance isn't going to be a big deal for you. Megas, bigs, probably be great. Uh, you'd probably be able to compensate for the difference uh, within like a couple days or a couple sessions of skating, something like that. If you're looking for sort of like a different take on a wizard frame where it's like longer than a standard frame, but not, you know, as long as it's like a 4100 and you want to do a lot of swivels, uh, and you want to keep all your soul tricks and stuff like that, you know, groove tricks, you could kind of go either way, you know, as long as you can get like some good soul tricks in, or at least as long as I can get some good soul tricks in, I'm happy. I think these are a pretty good option. The 270 millimeter length really chills out the two millimeter rocker quite a bit. I think for anybody that's even sort of used to a rocker setup, it would be a pretty easy transition for you. Um, again, these frames are really cheap. You can get probably two or three pairs of them for the same price as either of the ground control offerings. And while they're not the fastest frames in the world, um, they're going to give you in spades all of the other benefits of big wheeling. So again, as far as like doing all the swivels and slides and all that stuff where you really want the uh, big wheel profile wheels, um, yeah, these are gonna deliver on all that. The space between the middle wheels is big enough to where I can do sole grinds on ledges and you know not really have to worry about it too much. Really just a great option for like 20, 30 bucks, dude. So cool, that's the end. Uh, give the video a like and subscribe if you want to. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do next as far as videos. I may talk about, uh, may go back and do part two of that footwork video because winter's about over. So I'm gonna be back on the blades pretty heavy and realistically not making a lot of progress on ice. So it's a good severing point for that. I don't know, we'll see. See you later.